you remember last week's story? I told you about Stuart and Eileen, a brother and sister who went into the woods behind their house and found an abandoned building. And they decided to check it out. But when they did, they started to hear a rustling sound. Well, here's what happened next. When Eileen heard the sound, she was ready to turn around and run. But Stuart put his finger to his lips and took a step toward the sound. He was determined to know what it was. He stepped carefully and quietly closer and closer. Suddenly, he stepped on a creaky floorboard, and when he did, the rustling sound got louder, and he suddenly realized it was right above his head. He looked up, and right as he did, some plaster came loose from the ceiling right above his head, and powder and pieces of plaster came raining down on him. Eileen rushed to Stuart and grabbed him to help him up, He was fine. He hadn't really been hurt. But the plaster dust had gotten in his eyes. It stung his eyes, and he he couldn't see. Eileen had to take him by the arm and lead him back out of the building. She was scared, so she ran, pulling him along behind her to try to get away. She was afraid that maybe a snake or a coyote or a bear had been in the house and was coming after them. As she pulled Stuart along, Eileen wished she hadn't listened to him. Why did he feel like he had to go into the building? If they had just stayed out, nothing would have happened. If he had just gotten away from the rustling sound, instead of trying to figure out what it was, he wouldn't have gotten a face full of plaster, and he'd be able to run all on his own without her having to lead him along. As she thought about all those things, she suddenly realized they had gotten to the brook. She was still afraid something might be chasing them, so she tried to cross the brook quickly, but she was a little careless, and she stepped out on a rock, not realizing it was covered with slime from the brook, and she fell hard into the water. It was annoying that she got all wet, but then she realized that she had also hurt her ankle. In fact, when she tried to put her weight on it, she couldn't do it. She was stuck. Stuart was still on the bank waiting for her to lead him across, so she had to call to him, and he carefully felt his way out to her. He reached down and helped her stand up. Then he held her up as they crossed the rest of the brook together. The rest of the way home, Eileen still had to guide Stuart because his eyes were still stinging and he couldn't see, but Stuart had to support and almost carry Eileen because of her ankle. She was like eyes for both of them, and he was like legs for both of them. Now, they looked pretty bad when they got home, but their parents rushed out and helped them. They helped Stuart rinse out his eyes, and they helped Eileen rest her ankle. And before long, Stuart could see just fine. And after a couple of days, Eileen's ankle felt normal again. But think about this. What might have happened to Eileen and Stuart if just one of them had gone back to that abandoned house instead of both of them? What if Stuart had had to try to make it all the way back home after getting plaster in his eyes without having Eileen there to help him? Or what if Eileen had had to try to make it back after falling and hurting her ankle? They both would have been in trouble. But together, they could do it. And you know, that makes me think of something the Bible teaches us. Sometimes when we think about being a Christian and following God, we just think about us and God. But God has also put other Christians in our lives for a very important reason. We need each other's help to live the way God wants us to. The book of Hebrews says in Hebrews 10 verses 24 and 25, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. That means that we should think about ways that we can help each other. We should be a part of things that happen at church. And we should look for ways to encourage and share God's truth with other Christians. You know, have you ever thought about the fact that when Paul went out to tell people about Jesus, he never went by himself. He went with Barnabas, he went with Silas, Uh, other times he took John Mark with him, or Luke, or Timothy, or lots of other people, but he never went alone. Paul realized he couldn't do everything God wanted him to do 
alone. He needed help. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 and 10 say, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. We need each other. We need to look for ways to help other people do right and follow God, and we need to let other people help us to do those things. But that makes me think again of Stuart and Eileen. Now, I do want to be clear that if you ever find an abandoned building in the woods, you shouldn't go in. It really could be dangerous. But after what happened to them, they did what they should have done in the first place, and they told their parents about it. And a couple of weeks later, their dad and their older brother, Hank, went back out to the abandoned building with them to try to figure out what had made that noise. They were going to find out once and for all what the sound had been. Eileen felt a little nervous as they went back into the house, but Dad and Hank checked the floorboards and made sure everything was solid as they carefully stepped in. At first, they didn't hear anything. Then, they heard a little scuffling. Then, as they got closer to the sound, they realized it was above them, and they found a ladder that led up to a small attic. Now, Dad climbed the ladder first and shined a flashlight into the attic. Then he called them to come see. Each one of them took a turn, peering into the dark attic. They saw bright eyes shining back at them in the light of Dad's flashlight. But as they looked closer, Stuart and Eileen realized they were looking at baby raccoons. They were cute, and they looked really soft. But Dad warned them that their mom would probably be back soon and they should leave them alone. As Stuart and Eileen walked back to the house with Dad and Hank, they felt a little silly that they had felt so scared by something that was so small and cute and helpless. But they were grateful for Dad and Hank who could help them and guide them. And They were going to be sure that next time they found something like that, they would definitely go ask for help instead of trying to figure it out all on their own. The end. You know, I'm really thankful for the people that God brings into our lives to help and to guide us. I'm thankful that he can use parents and teachers and preachers and maybe even older siblings to help us to understand his word and follow him. We don't have to figure it all out on our own. None of us can please God all by ourselves. We need each other. And you know, I'm thankful that God can also use us to be a help to other people. Let's look for ways that we can help other people follow Jesus this week.